So imagine that you have finished with laying out your new board in KiCad and you're ready to make it and have the physical PCB in your hand so you can continue with your project. What are your options? So this is what this lecture is about. We're going to look at some of the most common manufacturing options for building PCBs. So here I've got PCB new, I've got a small PCB that is actually one of the projects uh, that I'm going to show you how to build later in this course. And it's a simple LED torch, battery powered LED torch, that's what it looks like. So one option that you have is to go ahead and use a process that is called chemical etching in which you can manufacture a PCB using a bunch of chemicals uh, through a process that is quite laborious and actually toxic in some cases. If you're not careful, it can be dangerous. I found uh, a place uh, here on the web that describes this process and you can see that it involves a bunch of uh, chemical substances. Uh, there's uh, muriatic acid, for example, that doesn't sound so good, mixing them up, lots of liquids and um, hydrogen peroxide, uh, plenty of warnings here. And uh, in my opinion, it's not something that I would like myself at least to, to get into. Uh, you do need to have a dedicated space. Um, usually people do this sort of thing uh, in, in the bathroom where they can control the environment, lock the door behind to keep out any kids and pets have special equipment, good ventilation. Um, now the output contains smelly, dangerous fumes and in all in all, it, it doesn't really look good. I've got an, another location if you are curious about this process, you go to Wikipedia and have a look at the printed circuit board article, scroll down to the table of contents and you'll see a section on chemical etching down here. This uh, chemical etching uh, information refers to the process that is followed typically at our manufacturer, but of course they are set up to do this safely. Just a short interruption to let you know that this video is part of my comprehensive KickUt course that will teach you every aspect of creating printed circuit boards with KickUt from scratch. Go to the course page to learn more about it if you want. Find the link to the course page in the description below and treat yourself with a discount coupon for my YouTube viewers. Okay, let's continue with the video. Now the other option that you have is to use a professional PCB manufacturer, uh, which is what I do. And um, with the proliferation of manufacturers like this, plus uh, quick delivery around the world and very low prices, in my opinion, this is the way to go. There are lots and lots of options. There's just many PCB manufacturers uh, around the world. Some of them are nearby, others are further out. Um, usually in China is where you'll find uh, most of the low cost manufacturers, but not necessarily. Here's one example, PCB Way. Uh, there's another example here, which I also really like, Osh Park, and there's many others such as, well, PCB. Now, if you are just starting with making your own PCBs, then probably something like Oshpark is the way to go because of how simple they've made the process. All you do here is to upload a set of files called Gerber files. I'm going to talk about really quickly uh, in this lecture. And then they offer you with a couple of options. Actually, let me just do this really quickly now and show you what it looks like. So here is a folder that contains a set of files called Gerber files, which are exported from Kikert's layout editor, PCB new. You create a zip with those files, drag and drop it onto your preferred manufacturer's uh, online facility, like in Oshpark here. And after uploading it, you get a user interface or typically a 
for Oshpark at least, is the simplest user interface that I've seen for this sort of thing. Uh, this shows you what the final product is going to be like, which is an opportunity for you to ensure that the PCB is properly designed. There's no defects. If there were defects, then you would be able to see them here. For example, footprints missing um, or uh, wires missing, connecting pins. You can click on continue. Oh, I've got to put in my email address for a second. And continue. And then you'll see how your individual Gerber files, so there's one, one Gerber file per depiction that you see here. You can see the drills, bottom board, the top board. This, the drills is where the pins go through. Uh, the solder mask, uh, the bottom silk screen where you have your graphics and your text and so on. So you can inspect this, make sure that everything is good and then go ahead with the order. If I go ahead with the order, you also get a feel of the pricing. So with Oshpark, um, we get three PCBs at the time I'm recording this for $13 plus the shipping uh, for this. And there's a few very simple options here, but nothing, nothing major in terms of you know, your ability to customize your order. You go to something like PCB way, and as you can see here, things are a lot more elaborate in terms of what you can do. Um, the process begins with setting the dimensions for your PCB. So I've used PCB new to measure my outline of my PCB in 66.04 millimeters. So I'm going to put that in here. And for width, we've got 25.95. And I'll go for the minimum five PCBs. It's a two layer PCB. In this, these days, there's no difference in price between one or two layers. So even if you select one layer PCB, really the manufacturer is going to use the two layer process because it is the standard these days. And go for a quote. Now this is where it gets really interesting. You can see that the quotation for a two layer PCB with the dimensions that I have selected. Uh, the base price is $5. So it's $1 per PCB. Then you can select all sorts of different customizations. For example, the standard material is the FR4 with the fiberglass material. You can go for aluminum or aluminium and you can see the price pops up to $26. But of course, this is a different substrate, a different kind of material. And there's others here that you can go for. FR4 comes in different versions, such as TG130 to 140, which is a standard. You can go for something like 150, 160. And don't worry about exactly what all of this means right now. It's really not important. I'm just showing you that there are many different options of customizing your PCB from a manufacturer such as PCBWay. Uh, the thickness, so you can go for a thin, very thin PCB, for example, just 0 0.2 millimeters for particular applications that involve really small spaces and therefore you want to reduce the thickness of your PCB. You can see how the price jumps because now you're customizing the order quite a bit. So I'm going to go back to, what was it, I think 1.2. You can customize the minimum hole size. So the standard is 0 0.3 millimeters for the holes, but you can again go for really small components with very small pins. You can customize the solder mask color and so on. So there's lots more options here um, from a manufacturer such as PCB Way, but you need to have a little bit more understanding of what these options are before you can go on and order from a place like this. Uh, and here's another example where PCB pretty much give you the same option. So I'm going to copy the um, dimensions, so 66.04 and uh, 25.95. for a two layer PCB. And you can see that once you go past that, the number of options, customizations that are available are very similar between manufacturers such as well PCB and uh, PCB way. 
But again, when you begin, uh, probably going for manufacturers such as Oshpark is uh, a good idea since it's a lot less to confuse. Now, having said all that, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, the Gerber files, as I showed you here, the output of your PCB layout in PCB new, in most cases, uh, involves the export of a number of files called Gerber files. There are other ways to send your design to a PCB manufacturer other than Gerber files. For example, manufacturers like Oshpark uh, allow you to send them the uh, this file here from KiCap, KiCap underscore PCB, and more and more manufacturers now allow you to just send them the dot KiCap underscore PCB file instead of the Gerber files, and then be able to read it and then produce your physical PCB out of this. But Gerber files does compose of an industry standard for PCB manufacturing, so it's most likely that you'll be able to use any manufacturer you want at all by exporting Gerber files. Now, Gerber files are defined by a company called Ucomco. You can find its website right here, so ucomco.com, and this is where you can find information about the Gerber format. And uh, there's been updates to this format over the last couple of years. There's GBR X2 and GBR X3 right now. KiCut, at the moment I'm recording this, supports uh, X2. So for example, if you have a look at the information here, you can see that uh, in my instance, I'm using the extended X2 format, which provides obviously various updates and improvements over the original uh, Gerber file format. So you can find information about this over here. Uh, again, the details are not really important for the purposes of our course and learning how to use KiCad, but this is where the, the story begins uh, with the Gerber file format. KiCad ships with a Gerber viewer, and uh, I've started this program here. I'm going to go into more details when we have a look at the first design uh, in the first project of this course, which is this uh, LED torch. But you can see here that I have uh, loaded a single Gerber file, which is the front copper file. You can see it right here. Uh, I can make it disappear and appear. And this just shows me where copper will be laid on my PCB. Now this file is this file right here, F underscore, F means front, this is the front layer, CU, obviously, copper, dot, GTL. And you can open it up with a text file, it looks like this, so it's, it's human readable, uh, it contains a header with some meta information about what this file contains, and then lots of instructions for the manufacturer so that it mostly contains uh, coordinates, uh, names of nets or names of wires, the coordinates, the start, finish, uh, and it turns and, and twists and things of that sort. This is not really meant to be read by humans, but I'm just showing you here that this is uh, just pure text and it is readable by humans uh, with the help of a simple text editor. Once you take this file and import it into a program like GURB view that can read it, and then it will graphically depict the information in the file so you can see it, and you can um, then do a last visual check before uploading all of these GURB files to the manufacturer. Now, another interesting website that I want to show you before we finish with this lecture is in case you are curious about the GURB files that KiCad produces and their extensions and what each one is, I found a good source of this here on this website, Candor IND, I'm not sure how to pronounce this. Uh, it's, it seems like it's a PCB manufacturer. It's got a very useful page with Gerber file extensions. So you scroll down here, go down to KiCad, and you get information about uh, the Gerber files that KiCad can export. And there's also a very useful table right here that shows you the various files that KiCat 
and PCB new in particular can export. So you can have a look at this and use it as a reference as needed. I find myself that I don't really need to worry too much about all of this. Um, as I'll be showing you in detail later, KiCad is fairly well organized when it comes to exporting Gerber files. You select the ones that you want from the included layers and, um, and just click on this button to plot them and you're good to go. Again, don't worry about this now. I'm going to give you an example and I show you the process of doing all this in detail when we are working with our individual projects later on. Okay, that's it with this lecture. Let's move on to the last few lectures in this section where I'll show you how to install KiCap on your computer.